Euzu billahi mineşşeytanirracim. Allahu la ilahe illa huvel hayyul qayyum. La ta'khuduhu sinetun ve la na'um. Lehu ma fi's semawati ve ma fi'l ardi men zer lezi yashfahu indehu illa bi'iznih. Ya'lamu ma beyna edihim ve ma khalfahum. Ve la yuhituna bi şeyin min ilmihi illa bima şa'a vasi'a kursihu semawati ve l'ard ve la ya'uduhu hifzuhuma ve huvel alil azim. La ikraha fi'd din kad tabayyana rushd min al-ghayh fa ma yakfur bit-taghuti wa yu'min billahi faqad istamsaka bil-urwati al-wusqa lan fisala fisa malaha wa la huwa samiun alim la huwa li alladhina amanu yukhrijuhum min al-dhulumati ila an-nur wa alladhina kafaru Evliyâuhum ut-tâgûtu yukhricûnâhum minen nûri ila zulumât. Ulâike ashâbun nârhum fîhâ khâlidûn. Sadıqallâhu l-azîm. Elhamdülillah, elhamdülillah, elhamdülillah. Allah has given us tawfîk and baraka to come to this stage, this hal that we can record this short message, inşâAllah, to you. These ayat I read from Quran al-Kareem are well known to all Muslims. Uh, ayat al-Kursi, uh, the throne, the from the realm of the the Kursiya, which is the lost realm of the Dathiya, and then the ayat following that. Uh, where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala clarifies to us. The difference between those who believe in him and those who believe have a grasp, a handhold that will never break, versus those who believe in Ta'gut and who are ungrateful to their Lord. Allah says of them that Ta'gut will lead them from light into darkness, whereas Allah leads you from darkness into light. What is Ta'gut? Uh, many translators use different ways to interpret the word. False gods, uh, etc. Ta'gut is uh, another name for Iblis, really, of for Shaitan. And uh, all that Shaitan represents and all the ways he uses to lead us astray. You know how this ayah ends and what happens to those who follow Ta'ud. So those who have La ikraha fi al-deen qad tabayana rushdu min al-ghay fa ma yakfur bil-ta'wuti wa yu'min billahi fa distamsaka bil-urwati al-wusqa la fisala fisama laha wa lahu samiyun alim Allah is the one who hears all things, knows all things, whoever grasps his handhold, it is a handhold that will never break. It is a hand that will never let your hand go and it will drag you from whatever darkness you are in, into light. So you must trust that hand and allow Allah to pull you through, subhanAllah. So this is the promise and the power and the strength we hold ourselves with. In these times that the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is going through very great hardship. It is one thing to uh, have patience and steadfastness through natural disasters, but it is another to endure tyranny and oppression. Alhamdulillah, I have a few messages I have to convey regarding what can keep our hearts steady in these times. These times are very difficult because in addition to the actual horrors unfolding on the ground, we have uh, darkness upon darkness spreading and enveloping us in unnecessary hate, propaganda, fear-mongering, impatience, lashing out. When people are afraid, they lash out. When people are 
provoked by uh, rage, they lash out. We are a people who have suffered a lot and endured a lot with patience and without retaliation, without oppressing the innocent or harming. without breaking the rules that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam set down when he was led us, gave us an example of how to stand up to tyranny and oppression. May we rise up to that high standard. At the same time, we pray to Allah that whatever oppression we are under will be removed and we have full faith that it will be removed because this is the promise of Allah. And Allah is Samyun Alim. He hears and knows all things. And as we all know, the dua of the one who is oppressed, Allah will not disregard it. So we pray, we continue to pray. We have been praying all these days and may Allah accept our prayer and may we continue in that. And all of you must also pray and work in Allah's way. Mm, to try to bring uh, the light of salam, the light of al-haq, the light of al-wadud onto earth. Our children, where, wherever they are, from whichever background, ethnicity, faith, our children need, need human beings of light. And we need peace on earth. So may we, be, may we be patient and steadfast. As you know, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he likened the wrestling with the nafs so it doesn't react uh, to, to a great struggle you must have with yourself. And uh, they call it the greatest struggle. So, these are times we must uh, uphold the ideals and principles of our deen the best way we can. I want to leave some advice with you. Um, the way to be able to maintain your dignity and your belief and not be provoked in these times is that you stay in the dhikr of Allah. Your heart must always, always be in the dhikr of Allah. Even then it is not easy, but may Allah make it easier. So if if you have majalis of dhikr around you, join them. The dhikr of the jama'ah is very powerful. Uh, if you don't have them, start them. Uh, make a lot of salawat ala nabi you need to bring down light into your heart your family your home these times whenever darkness is spreading or is propagating or is being magnified you have to work harder to bring down more light from heaven you do that through dhikr through salawat through salah through siyam and um, the easiest easiest form the gentlest form on your body, on your heart, is salawat ala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So make abundant salawat in these times. If you know the, the great uh, salawat of the olden days, uh, any of them you can recite them. There are amazing poems. Uh, even the, the poets in the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Thabit, I think, was one of the most famous ones, radiallahu ta'ala composed massive, magnificent poems uh, extolling the virtues of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Read them if you can find them. They are hard to find these days. But the more recent ones, uh, Qasidatul Burda, Barzanji Maulid, Subhana Maulud, uh, Dalai al Khairat. Um, uh, these are just a few. The, some of my most favorite ones, but there are so many. 
that you might find and recite them. Get into a group in your family. If your family is sitting down to watch TV together, turn it off and sit in that group and all of you recite together. Trust me, <laughs> at the end of 20 minutes it will have given you so much more power and strength and resilience and light uh, more than that 20 minutes or whatever you were going to watch would have. So start Majalis al-Zikr, if you are already in them, keep going to them. And then Alhamdulillah, bi barakatillah azza wa jal. A dhikr khas that has come down for me to share with you is that you may recite Ya wadud, ya samad, ya quddus, wa anta hasbuna. Ya wadud, ya samad, ya quddus, wa anta hasbuna. Ya wadud, ya samad, ya quddus, wa anta hasbuna. If you can recite this, uh, 40,000 times in one week, it will greatly strengthen you, Barakatillah Azza wa Jal, or 7,000 times in one day. If you cannot make it like that, try to stay in it at all times, inshallah it will strengthen you and bless you. The second thing you should do is uh, you have to learn Ilm al -Ghaib. Ilm al ghaib is, is, the, is the, the true spiritual force of Ummat al-Muhammad Ilm al ghaib the unseen. You have uh, much to face, not just now, but in the years and months to come. And you cannot withstand that if you don't know Ilm al ghaib This is the, uh, the unshakable rooting of the Muslim. That used to be there until the colonial catastrophe. And you know at Irfa, uh, whole, uh, our whole mission is to revive that Ilm al ghaib which is, we call it the science of Ihsan, the great science of how to worship Allah as if you see him, how to be in the state of muttaqi, of someone of taqwa, God consciousness at all times. When, of course, you can imagine someone like that, they are in enormous power and strength on earth, and great light to everyone around them. All that knowledge our Prophet taught us, وسلم, but it is the most elevated knowledge, the highest form of knowledge. So as you know, whenever we go through hardship or difficulty, uh, what is the first to be lost is the highest form. Uh, I'm, I'm a, I'm, I used to be a train, I mean, I worked as a trade science, trained scientist. So we would say whenever there's problems in the economy, the first budget the government cuts is the research budget. It's not necessary. You keep essential services, then you keep uh, other things, and then you cut off all the, the luxuries of a society. In the same way, the Muslim Ummah, when we went through the colonial catastrophe, we first lost the most sophisticated ilm, the more refined, greater aspects of our deen, the sophisticated knowledge, the harder to attain knowledge. But alhamdulillah, we maintained our essentials. So that is the science of Islam, the fiqh. That's the basic, how to pray, how to make wudu. There are still so many Muslims in the world, so minority communities, who all they know of Islam, perhaps is maybe how to pray. Uh, they might know some surahs of the Quran, but not know what it means. Uh, still, so we are at a very, very rudimentary level. Of course, higher than the sciences of Islam are the sciences of Iman, the, the sort of the the deep aspects of aqidah, uh, the deep aspects of qada wa qadr, what does destiny, predestiny mean, etc. That is also mostly gone. <laughs> so then you can imagine what happened to the science of ilm al-ghayb. And uh, the science of iman goes into ilm al-ghayb, the study of the angels, the study of the different dimensions, the study of inspiration, the study of dreams, what they mean. These are from the science of Iman to the science of Ihsan. So all this was mostly eradicated, but not completely 
completely obliterated by Allah's barakah. That is Allah's promise. He won't let it fade. He won't let it be wiped out. Uh, but now we are working to bring it back. So this is what we do at Irfa. All our energy is focused on that and we do it by writing and publishing and disseminating books in the English language that are actually reverberations of uh, ancient knowledge, subhanAllah. So the second thing you need to do is you need to equip, equip yourself with knowledge. You need essential knowledge. I've said this a thousand times. Ilmul ghaib for we are, we are getting a taste of how difficult things can become. Um, they might get harder. So equip yourself while you can so you are not caught unprepared. So you need the ilm of the ghaib to face what is in the mulk. You need the ilm of the malakut to face what is in the mulk and succeed. Alhamdulillah, the last message I recorded, I, I had the honor to say that we were close to publishing the book, Al-Futuhat Al-Asliyam in Qasas Al-Anbiya. Subhanallah, it usually we submitted the book for publication maybe two or three days after I recorded that message. Usually it takes about two days for it to be approved. But we had to fight a lot this time for its approval. Uh, that is, I think, a sign for how difficult things are becoming. Uh, you know, on the mulki side, there were unnecessary and ridiculous issues raised about it in the review process, mostly to do with the fact that it has a lot of Qur'an, a lot of Qur'an that we translated, mashallah, to do with the Qasas al um, and that we are using public domain works without copyright permission, subhanAllah. So. But in the Malakuti side, what we face in the Mulk as a Malakuti reality, as a reality in the other dimensions. And that reality I won't share in this, uh, in this medium, that you must learn how to uh, solve issues in the Malakut. So uh, how you have to combat that, and that is always through the Dhikr of Allah. So Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, it is available now. I don't know how long it will be available, whether other issues will come up, which will be harder to fight because <sighs> Allah Ta'ala Alam, but we will uh, put the link, inshallah, in the description. It's on Amazon, a very big book uh, dealing with uh, the stories of the prophets from what what I call the middle period of the human species sojourn on earth, that is from the time of the first civilization after the great flood, that is the Ad, uh, up to the coming of the blessed Messiah, Ruhullah, Isa, salam, and his ministry and how it ended. That is what I call the middle period of the human story on earth. And then we have the early period, that is from the time Sayyidina Adam salam, descended onto earth until the end of uh, Sayyidina Nuh salam's life. At that time we know human beings were much larger than now, lived a lot longer, had enormous capacity, greater than we have today. And they could, uh, Sayyidina Adam and Sayyidina Hawa, of course, they could see the angels. Uh, so they have capacity in the Malakut, right? And that, is, that stayed for many, many generations uh, until the Great Flood. After the Great Flood, there's a massive shrinking in the human being's capacity, the human being's knowledge, the human being's abilities uh, to interact with other dimensions with, and, and with, uh, with different aspects of creation and how long we lived, etc. And that kept shrinking from the time of Ad until the time of Isa, alayhi salam, but in a much, many more generations lived during that period. 
And that was a period when we had the most number of prophets mentioned in the Quran walking on earth. Um, so the book deals with that. Why some aspects of why they were focused in this area of earth centered in, in the Middle East. Some of the things they taught. And also we remember Sayyidina Sulaiman alayhi salam who revived some of the older knowledge because he could interact with different creation. He could understand the speech of the birds. He could uh, command the wind. So these are some of the abilities the early humans were very good at, subhanAllah, uh, understanding the jinn and how to interact with them. Um, and then gradually we diminish more and more. And then after the blessed advent of the Messiah, Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, who had a very miraculous life. His birth was a miracle, he performed many miracles, his ascension is a miracle, his life has not ended. We know he will come back alayhi salam. We come to the beginning of the end, the last period of human being sojourn on earth. The, the mark of that, of course, obviously, is the birth of the final messenger, Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Once the last messenger comes, that is the beginning of the last stage, subhanAllah. And we are now almost 1500 years since the birth of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And as I mentioned to our Jama'ah just, just, just a while ago, it is un, 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 <laughs> unprecedented, for lack of another word, that we have lived so long on earth without a prophet of God walking amongst the human beings. A thousand years was too much, never heard of before. Now 1,500 years, subhanAllah. Because even between Sayyidina Isa and Sayyidina Rasulullah Islam, not even 600 years. Uh, less than that for all the prophets before. When Sayyidina Isa was alive, Sayyidina Yahya, Sayyidina Zakaria, that two more prophets we know of within his own family. Alayhum salam, and we don't know of all the prophets everywhere else on earth. So this is really, this is really coming to sort of the end of the marathon when we are all exhausted and yearning for a prophet of God to walk amongst us. So don't be merciful with yourself. This is very hard, very hard to have lived so long without a Rasul of Allah with us. So whatever you are doing, Alhamdulillah, whatever you are holding on to, Alhamdulillah. If you are listening to this, Alhamdulillah, I know unless you love Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or love Islam or love Allah, he won't listen so long. Allahu Akbar. Mm. Alhamdulillah. So that book, MashaAllah Ta'ala, it took a very short time from writing to publication, <coughs> all within. Mm. So you must, uh, it's available now, try to get it. I don't know how long it will stay available. Inshallah, may it bless you. May I be blessed by it. Amin Allah. Um, Hmm. So these are the two things really I wanted to share with you. And about Ilmul Ghaib, I need to, I don't know if I've said it before, but remember Surah Baqarah begins with, I think I mentioned it before, but we will remind ourselves and remind you, we always benefit by remembering, reminding, this is the whole foundation of our spiritual practice is remembering, reminding each other. So, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه حدا للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك وبالآخرة هم يوقنون أولئك على هدى من ربهم وأولئك هم المفلحون صدق الله العظيم So the very first ayat that begin the actual 
yani the narrations in the Quran, because we have Surah Fatiha, Fatiha we know is a summary of all the Quran, and then we begin the long form. In Surah Baqarah, the first three, the first ayah, Alif, Lam, Mim, letters, we call them the Muqattaat, mystical letters sometimes in English, I don't like that word, we'll say cosmological, which no one knows the meaning of except Allah fully, though we have um, many interpretations. And then Allah goes on to say, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ there is no ambiguity or doubt in this book, which is subhanAllah paradoxical if you think about it, because we have just had an ayah that no one understands. But Allah says, Huda lil muttaqeen. There is no contradiction in it, and it is a guidance for whom? People of taqwa. Who are people of taqwa? Muhsinun. Why? The definition of ihsan from Hadith Jibreel is those who worship Allah as if they see him. So you are in a state of taqwa all the time. Therefore, the muttaqeen, the muttaqeen here are the muhsinun. Hmm? For them, it is a guidance. And then Allah goes on to explain who are these people. Muttaqeen. Alladheena, those who yu'minuna bil ghaybi. First thing, first thing. Have faith in the ghayb. Believe in the unseen. Believe in the dimensions other than the known universe. First thing, don't doubt that. What you cannot see, do not doubt, right? It's there and it's true, but you must learn about it. And then the Quran is a guidance for you to learn about it. salata, establish the, the worship, the salah. So now immediately we have worship in the mulk. So we are coming to who, who are what do we define how do we define people who establish the salah as Muslims? Because it's a prayer, or, I mean, it's a rukan, a pillar of the external worship. This is also very much a part of what we do in the mulk, giving out of our provision, right? So now we have we have covered muhsinun, we've covered muslimun. Next ayah, waladina again further defining. So again, remember, you cannot be muhsin unless you are also fulfilling the external, right? So this is where you shouldn't, uh, subhanAllah, I have seen some people who do that. They leave the sharia because they're in a tariqa or etc. That's not correct. If you, if you are in a, in a way to Allah to become muhsin, you will follow the sharia stronger than anyone else. And then next ayah, وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ Those who believe in what was sent down to you, that's to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ So we have to believe in the previous revelations, right? What came to Isa alayhi salam, what came to Dawood alayhi salam. Dawood alayhi salam had great knowledge from the early human beings. He could hear the zikr of the mountains. وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُوقِنُونَ And have yaqeen in the akhira, certainty in the akhira. How do you, how do you attain to yaqeen, certainty? When you die before you die. If you have already tasted your death while you are alive, this is hadith Rasulullah he told you to die before you die. You are completely sure of the akhira because you have already tasted it. This is what we call yaqeen, we call that dhikr akbar in how we teach ihsan. Ulaika ala hudan min rabbihim wa ulaika humul muflihun. For them, uh, uh, or they are upon guidance from their Lord, and they will be successful. So try to become people like this. And the first thing you must gauge with yourself is your knowledge of the ghaib. This is what the Quran teaches. This is not my words. This is the understanding of the order in which Allah has arranged his magnificent ayat, subhanAllah. This is why we say, ilmul ghaib has to come back to this ummah. You must relearn what Perhaps your parents or grandparents or great-grandparents didn't have the opportunity or the luxury of learning. You must learn it. 
This is not new. It is from the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from his knowledge, from the Salaf. They lived it because they lived with him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the mu'ajizat of the, we won't say mu'ajizat, let's say the karama of the Sahaba, the, the miracles of Sayyidina Umar anun, of Sayyidina Abu Bakr anun, of Sayyidina Imam Ali karamallahu wajha anun. You must know them if you don't. Hmm? Allahu Akbar. So this is why Irfa, we, we stay away from many other uh, issues, but we focus on bringing Ilmul Ghaib back and teaching that as much as possible. That is our mission. Whatever you can do to help and support us, may Allah reward you. <coughs> we pray that at least you will benefit from whatever we are able to do and offer. So, so learn, inshallah. So we'll end with, we read from Ayatul Kursi, we read from the beginning of Surat Baqarah, we will make the dua at the end, it is a comprehensive dua for all time, we'll end this inshallah with that. A'udhu billahi minash shaitani rajeem, bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Amana rasulu bima unzil ilayhi min rabbihi wal mu'minun, kulluna amana billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rasulihi. لا نفرق بين أحد من رسله وقالوا سمعنا وطعنا وفرعانك ربنا وإليك المصير لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لها ما كسبت ولها ما اكتسبت ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطعنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به وَفُوا عَنَّا وَوَفِرْ لَنَا وَرْحَمْنَا أَنْتَ مَوْلَانَا فَانْسُرْنَا عَلَى الْكَوْمِ الْكَافِرِينَ آمين الله سبحانه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله